This is Vicky, also known as Dragonfly7673. And it's Tiffany, also known as Mojave Knitter. And it is New Year's Eve, and this is the last episode of Dragonfly Soars. Um, this is our sister finale, since I said that I was, well, <laughs> I'm done. It's been almost six years, and <laughs> there's, there has been a, there's been a lot of good stuff that's happened. I mean, yeah. I sit there, I was actually thinking about it this morning, and I'm like, in the last six years, uh, kiddo moved and switched schools and totally turned that around, and yeah, dad passed away. That was not a good thing. That one was not a good thing, but I'm just saying, I mean, <laughs> best friend and I went from being friends to actually, like, living here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you moved to Virginia. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, there, there's been a ton of stuff that's changed in the last six oh. years yeah yeah because it would be it would have been six years in march okay so if you hear any banging or sawing or swearing best friend is downstairs playing in his wood shop so that we can be left alone but it also means he may be making whatever noise and he is directly below us <laughs> and he has a new toy and he has a new toy he got a mini lathe he also got new planes hand planes so he's doing his thing. So um, I don't know where we want to start. I have like, if anybody watched, there was a kind of um, unexpected freebie episode. It was a surprise. I made a um, Alice in Wonderland cross stitch for mom, but I had been working really, really, really hard not to say anything. <laughs> Heather was the only person that knew, and she would get, she'd be like, "Oh, you were really good at stopping yourself <laughs> from saying something." Oh, because she okay. knew about it the whole time. So when she oh. when she listened, when she watched episodes, she knew where she could tell where I caught myself mm. <laughs> because she knew. But yeah, there was only a very small handful of people that knew. Basically, people that were like my son, <laughs> best friend, obviously, <laughs> uh, Amy and Heather. <laughs> so um so i can post a picture of that at the end pretty much pictures will all be at the end <laughs> yeah because it's just easier because you can't do the whole yeah on and off thing. <laughs> in order to like... in order to get us you guys are like five feet away <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you don't have a remote control no i actually looked to see if there was something like that for an ipad and never like, I even didn't know, like, if there was something where you could do an iPhone to iPad and pause, and I never found anything. Because periodically people are like, you should back up. But whenever I back up, then I can't pause it, and then I forget to put stuff in. Mm. Yeah. So, it's fine. <laughs> last episode. Yep. <laughs> it's the last episode. We'll do whatever we want. <laughs> I do feel really bad I told you that... I think because of the Alice in Wonderland one, a whole bunch of people have subscribed this week. And if you were one of those people, I'm really sorry. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, a few months ago, I actually said that I was going to be stopping. But we had decided that we'd wait until we were to, you and I were together to have one last sister one. Yeah. So, you want to show stuff? <laughs> sure. I'll start with stuff I'm working on. We can go that way. <laughs> I have... They're called the Gansey Mitts. They're actually for her. She gave me a gift certificate for gloves. <laughs> yeah, because... Oh, that reminds me of something I have over here. To show yeah. later. <laughs> so, the Gansey Mitts, and they're out of a yarn from Maryland. Uh, Susquana Sock. Yeah, Susco... Susquana, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Um, it's just Maryland. I got it at a, uh, new local yarn store in, uh, the Richmond area. It's actually Midlothian. I don't know how you pronounce it. Susquehanna. Susquehanna. But it's pretty. Yeah. She, she actually brought an assortment of yarns, like, five, I think? Five or six? No, I think it was five. Five sounds right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she brought an assortment, so once I had my gift certificate for my free pair of fingerless mitts, I could pick a color. Yep. And then we talked a little bit about 
length and stuff, and it turns out we pretty much have the same desire for length here and here. So. And here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, <laughs> she, I was actually trying to make my own fingerless gloves and made these there, like the Octiva gloves. You start with a really cool swirly thing, which I'll post later. But somewhere I messed up my counts, and then I messed up some other places, and they don't they don't quite fit right, and they kind of flare, and I need to actually just rip it back and start over, and I just haven't had the heart to do it. <laughs> and it's not, I mean, it took me, what, three days? Yeah. Of course, it was a little more solid days because we were on holiday, but... It, they're not right, and I haven't had the heart to rip it back. But the the yarn the yarn worked perfectly for it. Yes, it's not the yarn's fault. I've had this yarn in my stash forever. I don't think this person's around anymore. But it was Fireweed Dye Works. Um, but and it was this rainbow colorway, and it truly does go through the rainbow. But yeah, all the faults are my own. And the other big thing I was working on is this is a, a Windy Knits pattern. It's called the Leftovers Cow. I have that pattern. I have that made. And I decided I just had a bunch of scrap leftover blue sock yarns and stuff that I liked together. So I decided to... That's really pretty. Um, I decided to do a background, and it's the same brand as the mitts as the, that that's gone out of the Maryland yarn, but it's just a cream sparkle. It's just natural. Yeah, it's just got a little bit of sparkle. Yeah, but I just thought that was a nice combo. Yeah, it is. Was up here? Was that a self striping? Yep. Yeah. Actually. And this one. That one's not. This and this and that one are all the same ball because they're self striping. Oh, that's cool. So each, but the way it works out, if I do like a three row thing, is pretty much just one color of this yeah. oh, stripes. But yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. I have that pattern. I just have not done anything with it. Every, I'm a pattern hoarder. Sometimes I just get the pattern because I'm like, ooh, that's really pretty. And someday, like, if I need a cowl, I will see. Oh, because I usually, when I'm on my Ravelry stuff, I actually will filter by in my library. Yep. To see if there was something I already kind of bookmarked. <laughs> yep. So those were pretty much the two things. I finished things while I was home, too. Oh, yeah, the socks. They were in the I bag. I didn't take those out. My dashing hmm. duos. But. I actually, on the socks that I had been doing, um, the, the somebody in Carlos socks. Anyway, they were the last set of Tucci socks. I did start putting the heel in the first one. No, oh, well there you go. But it's been slow going. <laughs> yeah, no, I finished it. It was um it's out of stock in that zombie yarn. Um it was the yarn, it was uh, the colorway of the ZK retreat of twenty fifteen called Oof the Zombie. I gave you a skein of that colorway as well. Um fish knits. And it's actually the pattern is dashing duos by Jay Nitma. And, and you said that the pattern was actually made for using up scraps, but you're using a self-striping, and it's yeah. coming out really cool. Yeah. Well, she had designed it where you could just do one solid color, or you change the color um, every... So many rows. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was a two-color thing because it came as part of their birthday kit. So you got one big skein and then one half skein of a color, coordinated color, so... But I decided to see what I only got what they call the flat kit, which is just the patterns and then some a postcard and stickers. So no yarn or bag. Yeah. But it's coming out really cool in your self striping. Well, they can't move their bellum, but I forgot to dig them out because they know. Going, going to be quiet for a second. Okay, maybe he's done. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, he's like a. Yeah, he's clearing dust. stuff out. <laughs> it's a um, like an air compressor blower thing like you'd use for a computer but he's using yeah. it to clean out the tools because they're probably full of sawdust but yeah but then the other thing I finished was the Josh Rake's scarf mist 
Yep. <laughs> Sounds really long. This year's scarfness. Oh, it looks really cool. Yeah. So this was Knit Circus, which you gave me. Okay. This is Matosh, which I believe came from AJ a few years back. Uh, the purple I actually bought off a friend. Um, and I don't know where the variegated came from. I don't remember now. Yeah, I didn't do the scarf mist this year. I did the, well, I did the last two scarf mist patterns both last year. Year. Yeah. <laughs> One for his sister and yeah the other one <laughs> the other one was for my uh retreat person and that's the one that got destroyed and then mom redyed it but then it went to somebody though yes then it went to fran yep and it looked cute on fran yeah so all <laughs> is well yes i have nothing else knitting I, I did finish the hat that i showed last time but of course i gave it to his dad for Christmas. He's just as bad at accepting things. His whole family, like they look at stuff, you know, best cool. friend. He looks at stuff, he goes, cool. I gave him this $200 hand plane for Christmas. I get, cool. Now, the next day he's telling his dad about it and he's raving about all the different things. <laughs> so he does like it. <laughs> he just, <laughs> but his dad's kind of the same way. Oh, thank you. He put it on. And he took it off and he put it away. <laughs> I think okay. he liked it. <laughs> um, I also finished a cross stitch Christmas tree, which you guys never saw because I got the pattern for my stitchy box. And then I did the pattern because I wanted to try it out. And then I framed it and gave it to his mom for Christmas, which I'll have to put a picture of that at the end. <laughs> Oh, you did share that on Instagram. I did share that on Instagram, yeah. If you're looking for me on Instagram, it's dragonfly7673, like everywhere else. <laughs> yep. And you did this. Yes. This was a present for her. It was a market bag, and I do not remember the name of the pattern now. I changed the handles, because the handles were originally supposed to be this, repeating up. Mm. But the way they were done, even he looked at it and was like, that's not strong. Like it wasn't at all. So I ended up uh, just doing uh, half double crochets the whole way. But with each row, I threaded it with um, fish line. Fish line. So hopefully it will not stretch as much when she's using it because otherwise it would stretch like crazy. Yeah, they tend to grow. So I mean the bag will grow, but hopefully the handle will stay. Yeah. Put. Did that. Oh, is it just had gifts? That's pretty much the name. After the only other thing I've, I've been working on lately is this cross stitch. This is I ordered it from Stitchy Box because they have kits. The design though is by Northern Expressions. Um, they made a whole series of these mini twists, um, which were to teach you different specialty stitches through the year. And I only have the very first one. Um, which is smyrgas and eyelets. Um, and it's interspersed with regular cross stitch and they're supposed to be beads, but I haven't done the beads yet. And uh, from what I just watched, um, Atomic Stitches posted one and she's actually did all of them for the year. And she said the very last one was called Potluck and it had every stitch they had learned throughout the oh. year was in the, the potluck one. That's cool. Which she thought was really cool because it kind of added up. And she did, she ordered all her kits the exact same color so that she, when she oh. puts them together, they all match. I haven't, I'm enjoying this. I think I will order more. more. Um, I have to fix this one. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> There's one stitch on here that I'm looking and going, it's a little wonky, but I, I like woke up with a cat on me and went, oh, I fell asleep. <laughs> and uh, I haven't decided if I want to make them all the same color or if I want to do all different colors because my inclination is to do all different colors. But I do see that like if you did them all the same, you could make them into a... Yeah. But she was actually going to make hers into a um, hanging wall quilt. 
because our oh, mom does quilting. Cool. Oh, that's cool. So, but but I think I would get bored if they were all the same color. Because that's me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just well. You could maybe. Well, they come in kits, so and they don't really. They don't like one kit does not really go, go with, with the them. other. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> like there's a kit that's more like reds and pinks because it was around February, and there's one that's uh, patriotic, so it's like red, white, and blue kind of colors, and there's an orange and purple from around Halloween. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they're available all the time, but they don't really go together unless I switched out my own colors. And part of what I liked is the how the color changes because it's hand dyed. Yeah. So I don't want to switch out for like DMC because it wouldn't have the same effect. So. No, no, you need the hand dyed floss so, for this. So, so I'm I have I have not decided yet whether I'm going to. I may just do them different colors just because I'm me and I don't know where they're going anyway. So what difference does it make? <laughs> At least I frame my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I will post a picture of this too. <laughs> I, I think it's so sad how many people I see finish stuff and then they stick it in a box. I'm like, oh, I've actually learned that framing isn't. If you want to do a fancy frame like what I got for mom, yeah, dang it, I still owe Mel money. <laughs> I have not paid. Mel is my guy's sister, and I owe her money for the framing. But she only charged me materials, and she only charged me the materials she had to buy, not the ones she already had. Mm. So it was much cheaper. Um, but she does not do it professionally, so she was well, she was just yeah, was just paying for what I bought, what she needed. Um, anyway, because that's fancier, she did it all. But I have at least learned how to do basic framing. Yeah, I yeah, because I did I framed my own for a wedding one that I did, and I did the framing myself. Yeah, yeah. it was simple framing, but yeah. Now I'm like I did. Oh, I didn't bring it out here. I did get a frame for my pumpkin passport that I really like. Um, I'll share a picture later. <laughs> I'll have to take one. I didn't take one yet. It's mm -hmm. not framed at all. It's just sort of sitting in there. Yeah. But I plan on, I need to get foam core for it, but then I'll frame that. But I think it's so sad when people do it and then they don't frame them. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> No, I, I, I mean, some people, I, and I understand being a process person, because, like, I am with a lot of stuff, like knitting or whatever. I'm like, oh, I just felt like making it. And then I figured out who, where it was going to go. But, um, but yeah, on my cross stitch, I really, I want to show it off when it's done. So, speaking of crosses things, your bag almost started out as something different. Well, oh. it was still a bag, but it was a really cool looking bag. I got, I bought the pattern on Interweave Knit. And it had these flowers on it, and they were made of these curly Q. You crochet these curly Q petals. I did one and a half petals and went, Oh no, there are eight petals on each flower, and eight flowers on this thing. There was no way mom was laughing at me. <laughs> I told her about it, it was horrible. <laughs> so then I had, I'd already bought all the yarn and stuff, so then I found a different one. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really pretty and you would have liked it, but there's no way I would make it with curly Q petals. <laughs> that, that's fine. That's, that's A-OK. -okay. I'm cool with that. <laughs> All right, what do we have? We have present stuff? Yeah, yeah. So, um, we both got this yarn. Oh yeah, mine's in the other room. Mine's it's a little bit different. Mine has gold in, mixed in. Yeah, yeah, yours is more, it's a little, has more brighter colors with yellow, and mine is just basically a pale mauve to this dark teal, I mean. It's, it's the Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball, which I've done projects before. Oh, that's another project I need to show on here that I don't have. Um, I made, I will talk about it in a second because it answers, answers somebody's question. Anyway, Shawl in a Ball, you've seen... The thing's out of it, but this one's a sparkly version that they just came yeah, out with. And, and I actually did buy myself some in some denim blues, and I started making a shawl that it's, it's at home, and it got set aside for um, other things. So. so, I made for my son's girlfriend a corner-to-corner -corner, uh, scarf, which I then sewed together to actually make it into an infinity cowl. Um, I will show pictures. It was it was purple to gray, and it's really long because there was a little bit of purple and then a long stretch of gray, 
And then I was like, well, I wanted the rest of the purple, which was at the end. So if she wraps it three times, it's really, really fluffy. And I have pictures. The last question on the what do you want me to share thread, somebody posted, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who now, posted, have you ever done a corner-to-corner -corner blanket? No, but I have done a corner-to-corner -corner scarf. I'm working on a corner-to-corner -corner blanket. Are you? Mm-hmm. Crochet? No. Crochet this is what they were asking about. Oh. And this was, <laughs> that was a crocheted cowl. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... I have done the corner to corner crocheted scarf and now I'm trying to remember there must have been more to the question than that. So I'm going to look real quick um, because I what I had seen it and I started laughing because I was like, well, I actually have a corner to corner blank. Oh, it was Calico Kitty. I have a, <laughs> I'm planning to start a corner to corner crocheted afghan, a C to C. Have you ever done this technique? Why, yes, except for I did the scarf. Um, Mikey of the Crochet Crowd, of course, has several, you probably know, um, well, you know because you wrote it in your question, has corner-to-corner -corner crochet blanket um, tutorials, including how to make them into a picture, grafkin, they call it. But he has one for the corner-to-corner -corner scarf, and that is what I, what I used. And I'll post the picture at the end, but I don't have a close-up of it because I didn't think to take a close-up of it, but... Yeah, you basically start with one square, and then you go back the other direction, you make two, and you keep increasing it, and then you end up doing it for the scarf, you end up doing it on the bias. Because at one point you stop, you're decreasing on one side, increasing on the other side. So, but yeah, it's a crocheted, but yes, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> she only asked if I, I was seeing if there was any more question to it, but it only says... Have you done one? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Sort of. It says, have you done this technique? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Send me a message if you wanted more than that. <laughs> but actually, it was pretty It was pretty simple. I just followed the instructions, and it, it made sense once I got going. <laughs> yeah. Then um, I have, from Mom, I have the... Um, it's recycled yarn. I have the tag somewhere, but is where is the tag? Well, that's the tag from the original sweater, but the Etsy place that it came from. Oh. Yeah, and I don't remember. Yeah, it's probably stuffed in here somewhere. I know I stuffed it in here somewhere. It's fine. Um, but this is actually that's the original sweater tag that it came off of. But it's a silk cotton wool blend sweater. But yeah, so now it's it's a lace weight. Um, and it's over 1,200 yards total. Yeah, it was really pretty. So. We were laughing when, when we realized that pretty much all the stuff she got was purple. And yeah. pretty much almost like the, in the same family of purple. Yeah, it's, it was, it was um, like, huh, it seems to be a color scheme. <laughs> Even <laughs> best friend bought her a, a flannel uh, wicking shirt for when she's working in the field. And it was purple. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and my st awesome horn to stab people with unicorn mug has purple. purple. Yeah. It actually has the same colors as the scarf. <laughs> it matches the scarf. Uh, my son really likes picking on her and giving her unicorn things, but he is very insistent they must be useful because then he finds it more funny because he knows you will use it <laughs> so this i'm time, amused by the unicorn mug so so this time he, he actually asked me to order it it came from an etsy store and and it says you know something about the best thing about being a unicorn is the, you but the top reasons for being a unicorn farts uh farts glitter poops rainbows and an awesome horn to stab people with <laughs> so you know yes but yeah, and then you gave me a bunch of buttons. Yeah, she makes a lot of sweaters and buttons, especially like interesting buttons can be difficult. So yeah. I bought an assortment of buttons that I like. I actually had to tone down my order because at first I was like, oh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> and then it was going to be like $150 worth of buttons. And while I love you. <laughs> That's a lot of money in buttons. <laughs> yes. But, like, this one in particular came in, like, different colors. Mm. Yeah, I think I've 
seen these on their site. I actually ordered them from Nitpicks because yeah. they had a decent assortment. I think these, actually, I think, yeah, because this is like the same type of wood that they use in their needles or something or similar. I don't think so because these are GHB. They're nothing yeah, to do with Nitpicks. But, yeah, so. But they came in, they had different kinds of colors, so. But, yeah, so I just have all kinds of different buttons. And I was trying to buy her enough of each style that it would be yeah. useful. Yep, see, and I have this style. And then these itty-bitty little metal ones. Well, they're not itty-bitty, but, yeah. Yeah, I think there's four kinds of buttons. I think so. Yeah, see, four kinds of buttons, so. Yep, lots of buttons. Now I'll have to figure out sweaters to go with the buttons. But I bought those and the yarn to make your bag at the same time. So, oh. which was the other thing. I also knew I was buying yarn at the same time to make your bag. So, yeah, one hundred fifty dollars worth of buttons seemed rather excessive. But like yes. I said, at first I was just going, "Oh, that one's pretty," on that one's pretty, and dumping them in the cart, and then mm -hmm. I sorted. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I just have yarn that I got partially because of, you know, dealing with picking out her mittens and then the bonus that I got for ordering the yarn. A friend of mine that I worked with when I was out in Fort Irwin started her own, she, well, she started her own consulting firm for cultural resources, but she also started her own dyeing, yarn dyeing business. So she dyes fiber too. Um, and she does tend to, she has an Etsy store, it's a material culture fiber arts. Um, but she, a lot of times, she, most of her yarn ends up being in local yarn stores in the Claremont area, because that's where she's based out of. Um, but she does do kind of seasonal yarns. And uh, this one is the one. A damn, I need more coffee. So I just that one because I her and, and and her best friend. And then we this, like our coffee. Yes, um, and this is actually one of her winter uh, color schemes, or and it's Joybird is the name of this one. Although I don't think she, I think she forgot to write it on the tag. I just remembered what it is, but she forgot to write it on the tag. But it's Joybird. <laughs> you have to write it later before you forget. Yeah. But it's got light blues, purples, and uh, speckles of the red. Yeah. Yeah, so she she's, uh, she does this more of a speckly dye, but not like full on speckled. It's kind of a mixture between speckled and regular dyeing techniques. This is her thing. And then this is, uh, she also for, I don't know, she decided to give people at the brown holiday time extra bonus thing so she sent this little mini skein of various which are all pretty colors together yeah yeah because each one's 50 yard skein yeah. so and i think they're all her standard um sock weight this one is the uh, merino nylon tinsel and then this one is her cat the cashmere mcn blend but I think these might just be her standard ones the regular soft weight but I don't know for sure. It might be a mix even because it doesn't say it just says fun yeah. pack. Yep not for sure but actually one of them looks like it has sparkle maybe this one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep that so is might... <laughs> yeah that is a sparkle base because she does have a sparkle base. I did not notice that. Yep, that's a sparkle based one. <laughs> so they're not all the same. <laughs> nope. There. Yeah. Anyway, that was a bonus. I have. Now, this, I will say, I was very confused when I got it. <laughs> and then a little panicked. <laughs> this was from Mom. It is a quilt set called Dance of the Dragonflies because it's really pretty and it's got dragonflies. And I was in a panic because I don't quilt. And I did see the note that said some assembly required, but at first I read that as I needed some assembly required. 
Apparently not. Apparently I need to give it back to mom because someday she will make this. And if she doesn't, I have to make it. Yes, that's the, that, that's the agreement is that if she dies before she makes it, then she has to make it for me. Because Whereas I need it, then I need to up <laughs> Mike will think sewing skills because that's a little beyond my ability at the moment. Yeah. And there's a additional black fabric for the back end here. Yeah. So some but really pretty fabrics in there though. It's it's really, really pretty and um we had actually talked about it just in the wow that's really pretty and she said she kept going back to it and then decided I needed it so and where it comes from, just like you've mentioned with cross stitch patterns, quilting patterns can just disappear too. Yeah. Yeah, we so. were talking, of, I was telling her that especially with cross stitch patterns, they seem to just disappear. Like you, all of a sudden you can't get them. Um, I just read earlier today that Teresa Wensler, who does some really pretty fantasy based ones, you, I am almost thinking that you had one at one point. I have first. a, no, I have a kit. And I have a book. Okay, which does not surprise me at all. They look like something you would think. Um, apparently, Absolutely. she has announced that her uh, she's got arthritis and she can't hold a needle for more than a couple minutes. So she is not going to. She's Done. retiring. Oh. Um, I just read that earlier today, and I'm oh, like, glad I had I'm what like, I did. Oh well, those patterns are now gonna <laughs> go up. <laughs> yeah. Now that's actually because I have this really cool unicorn one, which actually goes along the style of this stuff. But Eric doesn't mind when I finish it. Well, that, unicorn. That's fine. I just, but it's actually the next one. I, I have to. I don't cross stitch as much. Actually, I need to get a better setup for holding onto it. That's partially why I, I don't do it. Um, I need to get a lap stand or something. Which reminds me, I need to show you another person. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there is one, a no-count one that I've, worked, that I've had worked on on and off for years now. It's just three cat heads that I don't know who will go to. But but I, I figure I was looking at her stuff and I'm like, I swear you have. <laughs> yeah, I have a kit of hers and then I think I, I got, um, I have a book of her patterns. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because there's like this really pretty Cinderella one, and so yeah. This is still slightly oily. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still. Happy. Yeah, I'm not. So, I'm not supposed to be touching it yet. <laughs> this is from best friend. It was my belated Christmas gift, so I got it today. But it is a lap stand. Um, I have my needlework system, which is the metal one, which I do use, but my issue with that one sometimes is you have to clamp the project in which means whenever you want to change out the project you have to actually take stuff out and you have to unscrew it and resize it and it's not very easy this you did design this based on some that you could find for sale and therefore you know we're not selling this we're not saying this is his design there's some improvements that he made um, of things I requested like more holes here so that I have more adjustment. Um, but anyway, he made this, it's out of cherry. It has been uh, coated with a Dutch oil, so I'm not supposed to use it quite yet because until it's fully soaked in, he's worried it will get all my fabrics. Um, but this one, you just, this is too small, but you just set the project on top and then you flip it, take it off, change projects, whatever, you don't have to um, clamp it in. You don't have to clamp it in. So, And these tilt so that you can get wider pieces or whatever. So I'm looking forward to using it. It's more like an actual artist easel type thing. Yeah, it's designed that way. Yeah. So, so I, like I said, I like my other one. But I don't like the fact that I always feel like I always feel obligated. Like I, I put that project in, and then that project stays until it's done. It's done, or until I have to move the fabric or something. I was using it a lot for uh, Mom's Alice in Wonderland, mm. so I'd have it sitting here. But which is why, you know, when AJ was here this summer, he saw it because you weren't gonna. <laughs> it was out. <laughs> yeah. And plus, he was basically living here, so yep, it was not practical to 
I didn't. He was just told not to tell Grandma, and he went, okay. <laughs> um, Mom also gave me a latch hook duck kit because we have a duck thing and it's latch hook. Now I have two latch hook rugs. So I feel like I need to do one of them because because Debbie gave me a dragonfly one because my hand was hurting and she thought that that would be something I could do that wasn't knitting because she gave me all non-knitting craft things. Yeah. And then now I have a duck. So <laughs> they don't really go together. No. <laughs> Not at all. So at some point I'm going to have to relatch it. Uh, I have and best friend also gave me coloring books but I Doctor Who which actually I gave you yep. when it first came out Yep. actually what I gave her was a picture of the book because it wasn't out yet Yeah. <laughs> and Fantastic Beats and where to find them he um it, when we were on vacation, he bought me the book that's all about how they made Fantastic Beasts. I love that book. If you get a chance to look at that book and you like the movie, I would say look at it because it's all about how they did the sets and how they came up with the creatures and different things that they... Um, even like how they came up... I'm talking in half sentences. How they came up with the costumes and what were they going for and trying to get it so it's magical but it also looks like period pieces and how much work they put into even like the canned goods and stuff on the shelf so they would look like they were from that time period but if you actually look at them they're magical items they wouldn't have existed okay <laughs> like i'll have to show you later it's what i read yeah. i read the whole thing cover to cover and that like doesn't when he first got it i assumed i would kind of flip through and look at this and look at that but i actually read it cover to cover <laughs> So, anyway, so coloring book, coloring book. Um, AJ's girlfriend also got me a coffee mug that has a coloring sheet in it. Actually, we thought it had one coloring sheet, and it turned out it had three coloring sheets, but... I, I got a coloring book, too. So I colored one of them. Yeah, I have a coloring book. I won't show any of the inside parts because they're swear words. <laughs> I have that one in... I have, I have a swear word one in mini. <laughs> so, so, so we don't... You know, for the, the the sensory. So yeah, it's the swear word coloring book. The night edition. Yep. Well, it's just it has um, black what? background is why. Um, that came from one of my girlfriends that I I meet up with it once you know for Christmas time. So. Yeah, she pretty much only gets to meet up with them at Christmas because that's when she's in town. Yeah. We well, yeah, we got those. Yeah, we got our metal. We, we both got the exact same ones. Yeah. Metal Earth uh, Doctor Who things. Yes. Which we've never actually done. I actually have these and I have a dragonfly. And Best Friend has like a ton of Star Wars ones. And the only one that's put together is one that Mom did for him. <laughs> she knows he will never put them together. I know, we've discussed it. <laughs> that's why she put one together so he could put them up and also show one made. <laughs> There's also one that's destroyed because it was a... Tide Rider, I believe. Yeah. And uh, she was trying to put it together, and right at the end, she broke it. And she and got mad at she it. She got mad at it, so she smashed it. <laughs> and then later, she gave it, she gave, she got another one, and she built it whole. So he actually has three. He has one in a package, one totally made, and one smashed one that she said it's, it got killed Crap. in the battle. <laughs> yeah, it's a crashed Tide Fighter. <laughs> I thought it was funny that she gave him the crashed one. <laughs> okay. So, um, I have other things, but they're, well, this is sort of a gift. So, I bought this for myself. This is, I normally look at Mirabilia's and go, that's kind of pretty, but I don't want it. And, like, I was like, I'm never going to do one of these, never going to do one of these. And then the Rapunzel one came out, and I went, oh, pretty. <laughs> and I should look at it for months before I finally broke down and bought it. Well, when I bought the pattern, I bought it with the bead and embellishment pack. So I wouldn't have to hunt them down later. Um, but that was as far as I got. Well, his mom um, gave me a gift card so that I could buy whatever I wanted. And 
she mentioned that she thought I might want cross stitch stuff and she didn't want to try and figure out. Yeah. So I spent the uh, I spent the money she gave me to finish out what I needed. So I got all I got fabric and all of the threads I needed, including the DMC and the Krennic from um, one two three stitch. Now the DMC is oh it's more expensive there, but they like you click on the pattern and it says, Oh, you need all these and you hit the button and say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to hunt for them. So they're forty four cents a skein. At Joann's they're forty cents a skein unless you get them on sale for the three for a dollar or four for a dollar sales they have sometimes. But it's all done. <laughs> yeah. So plus Actually, I'm, there's a couple more colors that are coming in another shipment because the um, the gift card, you can't do multiple payments. At least if you can, I don't know how. So I did the first package all the way up to the very limits of the gift card. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the second one, I did PayPal. And it was like a couple more flosses and then needles and that I just wanted anyway and I think oh and one other uh cross stitch kit that had nothing to do with anything I just liked it <laughs> so but basically she helped me she didn't know but she helped me finish out my <laughs> my kitty of that and then I got books which are not Christmas related and I got my kit for my fabulous women so I, I told you guys last time I signed up for the uh, fabulous Women in History from Cause Factory. Um, so I got my, these are the flosses. And then there's purple fabric. I did take a picture of the no. kit. And there are three postcards that came with. Um, one has oh, Queen Elizabeth I, uh, Frida, and Amelia Earhart. So I'm assuming that they are three of the 24 women that will be featured because that would make sense. <laughs> yep. So, and like I said last time, it's not not even so much that I like wanted to do Clouds Factory. It's partially like I didn't know anything about Frida. I don't know if I was living under a rock, but I had never heard of her. Well, so I wow. actually so I actually went and like did you know a bunch of research to learn more about her. And I'm hmm. sure that in the 24 women, there will be other women. Like I talked about in the last one, the Hedy Lamar. I had no idea she had done anything besides being an actress. So if it also just kicks me off to go and learn, learn something, <laughs> I think that's a good thing. So so I I got that kit. Um, that does not start until the 10th. And that is the... I'm still signed up for the Lakeside Fantasy, but I'm way, way behind on that one. But I'm planning on working on it. I'm not going to even try and pretend I'm going to keep catch up with that one. But that one I'm still going to work on because I really like it. Um, this one I'm going to try and keep caught up. But every time I've seen their knit alongs or stitch alongs, they don't seem outrageous. So you probably could <laughs> yeah. keep up. Because I mean like the pumpkin passport was pretty easy to keep up. I only got behind a little bit right at the end because I was pushing to get the baby sampler done. Yeah. So otherwise it... And I was secretly trying to get mom's thing done. <laughs> yeah, so you had two other projects that you were trying to get done. So. Yeah, so that one I got a little bit behind on, but even that wasn't. No. That one otherwise I was keeping up, so pretty easy. So I just don't want too many. Um, and then I got books. This has been on my wish list for a while. Um, Brittany, who is Blimey Stitches on YouTube uh, talked about it and then she actually has a she has a cool year long knit along go, stitch along going on uh, for birthstone dragons mm. through her Etsy shop I don't remember it's like imaginarium something like that but anyway she's got birthstone dragons and she's released and talked about several times the January Garnet Dragon so that people could see it and get an idea if it was a style they liked before they even did it. But she's doing um, uh, dragons for each of the months, and they're they're really cute. And for the months that have alternates, she's actually going to provide two different sets of colorways. So depending on which 
you birth prefer. which birthstone you prefer out of the month you can pick. But she talked about this a while back. I'm pretty sure it was her. Um, and it's 365 tiny cross stitches. There's one cross stitch for every day if you just want to sit there and just pick one. Um, some of them go together like on the 12th of every month is a quilt block one. Mm. So if you want to put them together at the end, there's a zodiac one, there's a teapot one, but there's also just tons of other things like kitty cats and teddy bears and I just thought it was cute because they're little and if you wanted to do like a little birth sampler or something like you know just a tiny one there were some yeah. choices in here and I've had it on my wish list for a while and so I finally I Christmas went by and so I'm like okay I'm buying it myself <laughs> <laughs> and then I we went to half price books because best friend wanted to go to look for well I think we said he got a new lathe. Yes, we did. So he was looking for books on wood turning um, and on shadow run, and, uh, which is role playing. Anyway, so while he was looking at that, I was looking at books on cross stitch. And I didn't really want cross stitch patterns because especially in some of the older books, I find them very dated. Yeah. And some of them are cutesy and I don't. I don't know. It's hard for me to explain. I, I There's a level of cutesy I do, and then there's a level of, nope, nope. <laughs> that's too cutesy. <laughs> yes, unless you're making a baby sampler, that's too cutesy. So I was looking for more at the Stitch Encyclopedia, so I got, and they were 20% off. So like this one was $6.99, and then it was 20% off because they were having a New Year's sale. But it's got these full color photographs of stitches. And in fact, the stitches I'm using on this are in here. I found them. Because I just love to see. <laughs> and, uh, but I really like the, the colored photographs for all the specialty stitches. And I mean, it's kind of, technically after a while, it's not cross stitch anymore. It's a cross stitch and embroidery and hardinger and whatever. And <laughs> so, this had that. And this one was just an encyclopedia of needle crafts. And it has quilting, cross stitch, crochet, knitting, hmm. tapestry, smocking, buttons, buttons, <laughs> beading, tassels. I mean, it has like pretty much some of everything. It even has in. No, oh, I opened right to it. It has in here how to stretch and mount your uh, your stuff for framing, which that was interesting. <laughs> and look, <laughs> I have no bookmarks. <laughs> Uh, but, I mean, it has patterns in here, too, but it just had a lot of information. It reminded me of that Reader's Digest book that Mom has that has, like, a little bit of how to do everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it was $8.20 off, so I figured they were a good deal. I also got a Wonder Woman set. <laughs> it's the Wonder Woman 75th anniversary comic set. I think that's all I have. I think that's it. I don't, I mean, I have, I don't think I have anything to worry about to share in here. Nah. <laughs> yeah. One of my friends just said, I'm saying Happy New Year now because the phones will be clogged at midnight. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, we will need to pause though because I did not draw names for the final fiber of you. Oh, yeah. And it's because of repeats and stuff, it's really kind of a pain to do live. It's just. <laughs> yeah. So. so we can repeat for now. And then I was thinking awesome. we could talk a little bit just. Well, she and I were talking earlier. I had started to count, like, how many purple hats have we made? I had this brilliant idea, I was going to say. How many snuggles have we made over the year? How many purple hats? How many comfort shawls? Now, comfort shawls, I know, it's around 50. Because I took around 40 to them when I took the big bulk one, and then you, me, and Mom have made additional yeah. ones. And I will still make comfort shawls and donate yes. some. Yeah. Um, I plan on doing that too. So, but I mean, we have, I mean, we've had lots of purple hats over the years. We've had halos of hope, um, snuggles for pets. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think of all the different ones that have happened. Oh, the bear. Oh, yeah, the, the bears. Um, from Other Bear Project. Yep. I'm sure there's been other 
there's been other things along the way, but I mean, we've actually done, well, whenever we're talking like United Way at work, I'm like, I actually have done a lot of charity stuff. It's, I donate to United Way, but I don't always have the day of caring stuff because I'm like, I actually do a lot of stuff for my community. It's just not always, well, it's not usually linked to work. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still planning on, you know, doing my own donations. Like I'll have to, you know, I mean, if anybody else is doing a purple hat thing for Click for Babies, I'll probably, um, you know, count it on theirs, but I think I'll still do purple hats because that one's kind of become a thing for me. I like doing that one. Now we'll see because, I mean, there's a little bit where there was some accountability <laughs> with recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take these six skins and make all the purple hats. And I did. <laughs> if I don't need to show them every week, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, or even the red hats I made for American Red Cross. That was just because Heather dared me to make 52 items for the Geeky Girls Knit 52 Weeks of Charity Cow. <laughs> yeah. So I was happy when I, when we dropped off when we've dropped off different things, when the last time we dropped off the comfort shawls, they had moved and they now had a totally different building. So the building we used to go to, like I could go there and they knew exactly who it was. They even had a room where they collected stuff and it was easy. I just need to put them in that room. Yeah. Fine. Well, they moved and now like you needed to know who to drop them off because you had to tell the doorman and they couldn't be there more than 24 hours and so like you had to put a name on it and i didn't know the name because the person who does it is a volunteer she doesn't actually have an office there okay. so then i had to like look up and figure out who is the event coordinator and we put her name on it okay. <laughs> so i mean and it turned i like emailed and it got to them but it was it was a little nerve-wracking um the purple hats at least the person at the front desk was like oh yeah i think i know who that goes to when i dropped off the red hats for american red cross like the woman like when she came up to the door she said oh <laughs> <laughs> okay. i was like okay come on i'm obviously in the right spot and here you go yeah. <laughs> so sometimes it might be easier to mail except for i don't like mailing stuff when i could they're within you know easy driving distance so and they're expensive to mail especially like the, the shawls yeah because they're too big and yeah, the hats i mean i i mail the purple hats yeah but around here we have a spot that's fairly local to where we work so closest to me is west virginia but at least that one i knew exactly who it, it because of the debacle with the shawls now when I've been doing it I write an index card and say exactly who it's for <laughs> and <laughs> as much information as I can so if I need to leave it with someone yeah now I know <laughs> so but I mean and then we've had things like we had the birthstone colors mm -hmm. that we did you know knit anything you want it's you know green for emerald or yep so well, we've had a lot of cool things but yeah it's just time <laughs> so i am going to pause, pause now so we can draw names so and i'm going to close out the thread at least it's like late on december 31st so you're only losing like four hours <laughs> <laughs> we have drawn names um so we have for the $15 prize, which can be Ravelry Patterns or 123 Stitch, uh, Little Mermaid for her vanilla socks. They're actually stripy, so they're, there's like a zigzag pattern by Salad. I'm going to try and post pictures at the end. I did take screenshots. <laughs> yeah. So, Little Mermaid, I need your uh, Ravelry Pattern list. Or if you want the one, two, three stitch, I need your real life email address. Um, for the other $15 prize, also Ravel Ravelry patterns or one, two, three stitch, is KPAR62. She posts all the time. <laughs> this, yep. one was a, this one was a dishcloth. So um, we got that one. And then I never know how to pronounce this. Her name is Linda. 
It's L M E C O L L. C-L-M-E-C-O-L-L. See her all the time. I knew her name was Linda right away. I have no idea how to pronounce her Valerie name. <laughs> but Linda, you won the $25, which you can redeem at Etsy or 123Stitch. So for sure, I need your real life email address. And hers was a hat for her husband. Oh, yes. It was a blue hat for her husband. <laughs> so that is the final Fiber and You um, drawing. Yep. I, like I said, Heather and I actually talked about it, but it seemed like without the podcast, it seemed we would keep doing it. it well, it would be harder to uh, show who won. Yeah, to show who won and encourage and... Yeah. And so, I'm not even sure what's going to happen with the group. Like, it's just... <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not killing it at this point. It's <laughs> yeah, I guess it'll depend. I mean, you could do have a you know share what you're working on thread and but yeah yeah i mean there have been so many people and i've gotten so many nice messages from people lately you know just saying thank you for for doing this over time and we're gonna miss you and stuff like that and i mean everybody's been really understanding but um <laughs> it's just time but i'm not quite sure how this is going to play out now <laughs> but i'm gonna keep stuff open yeah and uh, everything is, since the time I started putting on YouTube, everything is still on YouTube. There is a subsection farther back where I was only on Blip, well, Blip and iTunes, and those ones are pretty much gone, like I have them saved somewhere, but I have no intention of trying to go back and upload them to YouTube, so, so, but everything will still be there. I'm going to let the iTunes fee, well it's actually the um, the in-between service um, I'm going to keep paying for that for probably 5-6 months and then I'll probably let that go I just let YouTube be the place because it seems silly to pay $10 a month for something I'm not adding to anymore Yeah. so and I I think I need to look at it it might be that it maybe I don't need to pay. I don't know if when I stop paying, if my videos go away, or if everything up to that point stays and I just can't add anymore. I I I don't know, so I'd have to look at it, which I have not done yet. <laughs> I have like a billion things in my head that I keep going. Oh yeah, I should look at that. <laughs> well, if anything, they'll stay on YouTube. Yeah. So. so, and actually there's several years on YouTube because I, when I was on Blip, I was actually cross-posting you to YouTube because for quite a while, Blip and YouTube were actually playing nice and you could just check the little button and it automatically pushed them to YouTube. Yeah. Then there was a period of time where they weren't playing nice and you had to do them separately, but by that point, since I had people on YouTube, I just started putting them there myself. And then Blip decided to just drop everybody, so... Yep. Which was probably a mistake on their part since they don't exist anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think they wanted to be like YouTube or something. I don't know what they were trying to do. They wanted to be, from my understanding from what I read, they wanted like original content of people like making like a uh, series. Yeah. Kind of like what YouTube Red is doing right now where there's some shows that are actually almost like mini TV shows. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't, they didn't have that kind of clientele yet. Uh, it's probably the wrong word, but they didn't, that wasn't how people were using it. And when they tried to force it, it didn't seem to work. And all they did was really piss off the people who were using the service and paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so, yeah, they kind of, I think they kind of they messed up themselves. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say it a different way, but we're trying to... We've never had the explicit warning, and we're not going to do it on the last episode. <laughs> That's why I covered the words. Yes. I was conscious of this, this time. So, anyway, I think that's the end yeah i, I feel like so. we should have a grand finale thing but i really uh, don't know how to say anything except for goodbye you've been lovely 
Farewell. Farewell. So long. <laughs> We're not going to sing anymore. <laughs>